Hi everyone, this video will demonstrate setting up SI2016. Now depending on who you are um, in your company, you may not be the person doing this and in fact your user profile may not even have the permission to edit uh, some or all of these settings. So to set up, we're going to go to start, set up, and then go to the control panel. This is where all of the settings uh, in SI2016 reside. This video isn't going to cover all of the settings out here in the control panel, um, just some of the more important ones for getting started. You can get full information on all of these settings in our user guide. So uh, one of the first things you're going to want to do is set up your company information. And if you click this, you'll see uh, it's a place for you to put your company name, your address, uh, phone number, and even your company logo. Um, this information is used throughout the application, uh, primarily on reports. You can also set up a uh, company profile here. If you click this tab, um, right now there's not one loaded, you can create a new one um, or attach an existing RTF file, so rich text format uh, that was created in WordPad. If you choose new, it will create a new RTF file and open directly uh, in WordPad should you choose to do that. And that's where you can you know, put a description of your company, um, any images that you want, and that is an optional uh, report in the software. So let's go ahead and save and close that for now. Now, if you're an admin, you're going to want to set up your users. So if we just double click this, uh, you'll see we have some users set up here. And uh, to create a new user, you click New. That will open this form where you uh, enter a name, email, uh, mobile number if you uh, want to. You can choose roles. And as you can see, you can edit your roles up here. And if you want, you can put a cost per hour, uh, primarily for technicians when you're using our scheduling um, features in the software. And this interface uh, really is setting up users and resources, or sh I should say users and or resources, meaning you can create um, a name here with an email address, uh, but not give um, that person the ability to log in or sign into System Integrator. Um, you may just give them the ability to sign into the uh, mobile install interface. Uh, again, maybe they're a technician or an installer where they don't need to log into the main application here, but they'll need to log into the mobile uh, install to see their tasks and service orders and update those. And of course you could set up a uh, person to have both abilities as well. So when you check this box, uh, you'll enter a username and a password for logging in. Um, you'll also choose a group. Here you can see um, we've got a few groups listed here and groups are set up here where you can choose the permissions uh, for a particular set of users. You can grant or deny them access within the software. And uh, when you click mobile install, or mobile installer here, um, it's going to copy down the email address, or of course you can enter the email address here. And then you can choose the role for the person. Uh, there's only two options here, either an administrator or an installer. Um, an installer, when logged into mobile install, will only see their tasks and service orders. An administrator will see all tasks and service orders in the mobile install interface. So that's how you go about setting up users. And uh, once you set up a user, you can also click the send email option and that will send the user um, an email that we showed in a previous video that will have their username, password, and server name so they are able to log into the SI2016 client. Go ahead and close out of here. Another important aspect of setting up SI2016 is to choose how you're going to charge for labor. Um, phases are one way. And if we open this up, you'll see the default list of phases are roughen, trim, finish, and programming. The top three being the physical time that you're installing equipment. And phases get assigned to products in the SI2016 catalog. Products also get assigned a uh, number of hours. So as you add products to a project, they automatically calculate the labor based on the rate that you set here um, for the phase that they're assigned to and the number of hours assigned to the product. Now, um, here you can see I filled in uh, the base labor uh, with a cost per hour and a selling price per hour. Uh, you also have the ability to enter miscellaneous management and design labor per phase if you choose. Now, if you do decide to use the miscellaneous management and design labor, there is an extra field that you'll need to enter, and that is the factor percent. So just as an example, if I put uh, 85, you know, 150. Uh, this is a percentage of an hour, actually, here. So you could say, you know, 10% of an hour. For every hour of rough-in work, you will charge $100 for the base installation, the actual install labor, and then the management and design being background labor, um, you could charge, say, 10% of an hour. And as you can see, it'll calculate out for you here and show you the total per hour. 
Um, it's optional if you want to use these fields. Uh, in the beginning, you might just want to put the base labor. And over time, you may come up with these numbers here, or you may not use them at all. This is just one method for charging labor inside of uh, SI2016. The other method is to use labor items, and we're going to cover that um, in another video in this Getting Started series. Um, and labor items reside in your catalog, and those can be added to a project just like a product, and uh, they'll contain your labor rates. Um, you're going to end up creating at least one of those uh, if you do any sort of programming. Um, the reason for that is uh, products in SI 2016 can only be assigned one phase, the physical time they're being installed, either rough in trim or finish. Um, those are, again, the default names here. And uh, programming will be a labor item that you can then add to a project um, if you choose, and um, you can set a number of hours on that, and we'll demonstrate that uh, later. Now, if you do rename these phases, just keep in mind that any products that you download uh, from the DTools library will not have a phase assigned to them automatically. Um, so we do recommend that you leave these names um, as the default, at least in the beginning. Um, and then if you decide to say change rough into pre-wire later um, and then download products from us, you'll just have to make sure that you assign those products the pre-wire phase because again, they'll come down with no phase. Go ahead and close out of there. And the last uh, really important setting out here that you'll likely want to set before you start creating projects will be your tax settings. Go ahead and double click this and you'll see there's a tax and a labor tax field here. Now, if you don't charge labor tax, of course, just leave this blank. Um, but they're assigned these names by default, tax, labor, tax, and then you'll set your rates to these. Now, you can create as many taxes as you need to create. Um, you can even create tax groups um, if needed. You can see here a tax group. If you do that, you're just going to add taxes to this. So it could be like PST and GST, something like that, where it would be a group uh, with two different taxes in that. Uh, it's up to you. Just set your tax rates here. Now, um, of course, back here, you're just setting the default. Uh, on a per project basis, you'll be able to change your taxes to whatever you need them to be in the event that um, a project is not your standard tax rate, if it's uh, you know, out of state, out of county, out of country. Now, there are a ton more settings out here, as you can see, um, like manufacturers, categories. Uh, you likely won't be uh, coming out here to the control panel to add these. Um, as you add products to your catalog, uh, these lists will generate for you, and it'll be based on the manufacturers you've downloaded and the categories you've assigned products to. Um, there's locations and systems. These are used within projects for um, assigning specific locations where equipment's being installed and then what system they're a part of. So over time, you may want to build this list. That way, when you're creating a project, you can choose from this list versus having to type the names of rooms every time, um, assuming there's you know common names of rooms uh, for the projects that you do. And those really are the, the basic settings to get going with SI2016.